All right, we are live and recording. And I, I didn't even ask, is it Keeley? Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah. Keeley, yeah. Okay, Keeley. All right, so I have Doug Keeley on the podcast today, and we're going to be diving into a little bit of his backstory and his, um, his work, The Silence Project. So just excited to learn more about what you're doing, what you're up to. I think I have a pretty good idea of what, what you're doing, but I could be completely wrong. So just fascinated to hear people's... Um, passions and and their work and you know just trying to uplift this human consciousness because we're in a pretty dark place uh in, in my personal opinion so i think we need all the uh, healers and messengers and people out there spreading the good word so it's excited to talk to you man and see see what what you got going on so thanks for coming on appreciate it well thank you chris i i appreciate appreciate the opportunity and all the work that you're doing and i've, I've been looking at uh, some of your work and uh just you said a little bit earlier, as we were kind of getting ready here, you know, raising the vibration level, getting right. people consciousness. We are, we are so much more than the world would have us to believe. Yeah. And I spent about 30 years in a corporate environment, and I saw people trying to be who they thought the corporation thought they should be. Mm -hmm. And depending on your grounding, you may be prepared to give away all of yourself to try and accomplish what you saw as an end goal. But maybe as you start down that path, you find out, I don't know, I'm, I'm giving up an awful lot of who I thought I was to get where I thought I wanted to be, but I don't feel so good about where I am now. And I think in the fast-paced environment that we live in today, people don't stop to take inventory of where they are. Yeah. They don't stop and get still. Phones, texts, this message, that message, radio, television. I mean, it's, it's just a non-stop 24-7 stream of information. The question is, what is that information doing for me? And right. in most cases, it's blinding me to my truth, to right. my P R U E self, my capital T true self. So I guess where the book kind of started to come a couple of years ago in skeletal form was I saw the worthiness of people being just kind of tossed aside people not feeling good about who they were. Their self-worth was kind of not even a, a part of their life anymore, a part right. of their situation. And I thought, okay, I remember when I didn't feel very good about myself. And that was when I was young. Um, I don't want to spend a lot of time on me, but I think you saw in the intro I sent to you that um, I, I, through surrender, I was able to overcome some you know, childhood uh, right, abuse, right. psychological and physical abuse issues and, and and we all have something that we've gone through or we're going through um and i saw people in my family immediate family uh, going through trials and tribulations uh, had a nephew pass away um, became a victim of the system and i thought it's time for humanity to stop listening to the noise is start listening to ourselves because everything we need is everything we have. Yeah, we already have it. Yeah. Within, right? Yeah. All the answers that we're looking for are here. And we don't know that because we're not taught that in school. We're not taught worthiness. We're taught competitiveness. We're taught one upmanship, one up, one person upmanship. It's just, it's it's a constant noise is probably the best way to put it however whatever form that comes in right. so i thought what if we could calm the ego bring the ego to stop you can't get rid of ego i'm not suggesting that and in my live speaks i talk about i have these boxes or ego boxes big e smaller g smaller o and people want to know what's this ego thing about well we're consumed, our egos are consumed by judgment and opinion of the world, of society. Yeah. 
what car we should drive, what house we should live in, how much we should make, how many 2.5 kids we should, whatever it is. And so if we are everything we already need to be, then we don't need to be listening about what I should be doing. I need to be thinking about who am I and how do I bring my gifts and talents, the person I already am, to become part of society as I am. Right. Now, I realize there might be a price to pay for that. I talk about that a little bit in the book. You know, people who are very driven to the arts, very driven to uh, things that aren't mainstream, a lot of times there's a price to pay, depending on how you look at it. Because if you're, if you're pushed to the periphery of society, you're probably going to have to do it of your own accord. It's going right. to take you to make it happen. You're not going to be mainstream yet. But if you're not happy in mainstream, then maybe that's the alternative. Right, right. But a lot of people don't know where to start. And I thought, how can we begin to understand who we are? What do we have to do first to, to believe that I'm okay sitting here right now talking with you and you're okay talking. There's nothing wrong with us. We're perfect. We are who we are. You have your unique gifts and talents. I have mine. How do I, how can I possibly help people to understand that? And interestingly, the word silence became the backbone, literally and figuratively of the book. Okay. S I L E N C E. Each of those letters attribute a portion of your self discovery. And as I surrendered more to the book and surrendered more to the universe and just, just let the flow come in, it all started to make sense. It all started to come together. I was able to relate to my childhood. able to better appreciate the wonderful gifts that I'd been given. It's not that my wife and I don't think about these things. We do. Many, many times through the day, we think about how blessed we are. I mean, we've been together over 50 years. We have three beautiful daughters. We have four beautiful grandchildren. I mean, we have our health. We have our freedom. You know, I mean, you can't want for a much, much more than that. Right, right. You know, how much better can it get? Yeah. But if you're pursuing what somebody else tells you to pursue, you might miss yeah. the gratitude that you need to stop and give thanks for. Yeah. And when we say thank you, that's humbling. Just saying the words thank you brings you, at least for me, it centers me. It brings me to a place of calm. And I thought, how can I help people to do that? Now, not everybody is in a place where they want to be still and be silent. I understand that. Right. And, I'm, and I'm, I'm not selling anything, but the people I've spoken to, the people who've been at the speaks, the people who have thought about pursuing what they want in life said, wow, it's so simple. How does it work? All right. All right. How does it work? Well, First of all, you have to see yourself as worthy. That's the S, okay, in silence. Well, how do I do that? You have to let go of everything that you brought to this moment right now, everything that you have experienced, good, bad, desirable, not so desirable, is ingrained in you now. It has been a part of your unfolding. And so here you are. Let it go. Living yesterday, today, swallows your tomorrow. You can't right, yeah. tomorrow if you're constantly looking over your shoulder. So accept that the people who came into your life were there for a purpose, were there to help in your un unfolding, and surrender. That's a tough word for we humans to... Yeah. What does yeah. it mean to surrender? Right. Yeah. 
and it means something to each of us differently, depending on where we are. And that's where the ego comes into play. Ego loves the drama, right? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. That person wronged you. That person hit you. That person said this. That person said that. You can't let that go. So we live in that toxic waste of anger, hate, jealousy, grief, whatever it is that we're holding. But when we surrender, it's amazing. That, that cavity of hate or whatever it was you were holding, when it goes out, what comes in to fill it? Love. Yeah. Love of self. People are uncomfortable. What do you mean I have to love myself? Well, it's pretty hard to love someone else if you don't love you. And yeah. that's a people of you. There's nothing wrong with loving ourselves. So, self-worth. Then, as you see yourself as worthy, you're now able to, I, be inspired by who you are, your gifts and talents. Yeah. What does that mean? Well, maybe you haven't thought in a while about what it is that just naturally comes to you. What it is that you get lost in, very easily lost in. Hours can pass. I play the guitar. And when you get with somebody who's, you know, you're playing off and you're singing with, and four hours, five hours can just go. It's, it's, it's amazing because you're, you're, you're almost transcended to another place. Uh, what, maybe, maybe, you, uh, maybe you love to speak. Maybe you're a mathematician. Maybe you're a scientist. You get lost in the lab for days on end with new discoveries. Who knows what it is, the gifts that we possess? But if we never allow our inspiration to percolate because we don't feel good about ourselves or we're not fitting in, we're missing something extremely important because we're not here by accident. Hey, hey. Well, I think that's, I think it's part of the struggle too. Like you kind of touched on it. It's like, you know, just, you know, whatever feelings we have about ourselves, there's that internal story that we've created about ourselves, that internal dialogue, like I'm not worthy or, you know, I'm not good enough. And it, over time that becomes our reality because we said it so many times in our head, we start to believe it. So though, I guess where a lot of people get stuck and it's hard to move past that and start focusing more on the, the positive things about us instead of the negative, but that negative pull so strong, man, it, it, it's hard to, to get rid of that. And we're pre-wired negative, right? I mean, <laughs> it seems like that way. Yeah. Here's a pre-wired negative. It's to protect us. I mean, yeah. I, I understand that part of it, but that's where discernment has to come in. All this information that's coming at us, this, this fear and negativity, fear and negativity all the time, we have to decide what's going to, we're going to allow into our realm. What you're gonna feed, our, yeah. Yeah, what, what does it do for me? And if it's terrifying, is there anything I can do about it? Is it in my neighborhood? Is it, is it in my country? Is it in my continent? I mean, it's terrible that it's happening, but there's, there's certain things that are going on that are, we're powerless to. So to yeah. be consumed by it serves no purpose. Yeah, there's that, there's that Buddhist saying, I'm probably going to botch this, but if, if you have a problem and there's a solution, there's no need to worry about it. If you have a problem and there's no way to fix it, then why worry about it? So either way, don't worry about it. Exactly. That's what the outcome is. Worry, worry serve, serves no purpose at all. <laughs> right, right. It, it serves nothing. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. So that's, that's the I. The I. Is listen to your heart. And to most people, they don't even, you know, what do you mean, listen to my heart? You know, in Western society, we don't do a lot of meditation. I know we've started to do it in recent decades, but in, in some cultures, it's been around for forever, basically. So to listen to our heart means to allow our inner self, our knowing, to come forward. Our intuition. And yeah, intuition's in there, too. And that's part of the E, the empowerment. But listening to your heart, just, just, I say you can, you can put your hand on your heart. Um, that, that kind of activates the heart chakra and you'll feel an activation there. 
and you'll feel a knowing. And, and, it, and it's strange. It's kind of like when you turn on an old style radio and you're trying to fine tune to get that message until you start doing that and listening to your heart. It's kind of all fuzzy. Doesn't make yeah. sense because because we don't we're not taught to listen to our heart. Right. We're taught to listen here. So as ego declines, hearing increases. The question is, where are you listening from? Is it here or is it here? Listen here. Because when we listen with our heart, we put our ego in its proper place. And then we can move to E, from L to E. Empowerment. Empower yourself. That those first three letters are, they're a lot of work because culturally, socially. The conditioning, yeah. We're conditioned. We don't, we don't have a high opinion of ourselves. Inspiration, eh, listen to your heart. Oh, what are you talking about? That's woo, woo, woo. Yeah. So if you can get yourself in a space, in a place where you can get thinking, S, the I, the L, that's the climb. Then you get to the pinnacle, the E, empower yourself. And there's four key areas for empowerment. The first one, and, and these are going to depend on where you are as to how important it is to you. The first one that I was given was forgiveness. That's a big word. Yeah, it's a tough one. Huge word. And in forgiveness, and we talked just a little bit about this at the outset, forgive yourself first. If, if you've harmed somebody or wronged somebody, forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. Holding on to that serves no purpose at all. So forgive yourself. Love yourself. The second forgiveness is to forgive everyone who has ever harmed you. That may have been your parents way back when. It might have been an aunt, an uncle, a teacher, a coach. Who knows? A girlfriend, a boyfriend, a wife, who, whoever it was. That pain that you're carrying, that's stealing you. Stealing your freedom. It's a chance. That person, if they harmed you in some way, they've forgotten what they said forgotten what they did. It was, it was at their conscious level at that time, that consciousness level at that time, and it's probably been forgotten, long forgotten by them, but you're carrying it. Yeah. Now, I realize that there are some people, generations of people, who have been harmed, and for me to suggest that you just think about forgiveness and it happens, that's not what I'm suggesting. Right, right. But forgiveness empowers you. So if you can forgive, when you are to the point where the ego is, is away from your realm, it's away from your thought process, and you can forgive. I, I did a speak, and at the end of the speak, I, I asked, did anybody, has anyone ever had to go through a very difficult uh, forgiveness process? And this lady said, rose her hand, raised her hand, she was late 50s, early 60s, she said, yes. I said, would you like to share that? She said, yes, I had to forgive the people who murdered my son. Yeah. And wow. To do that, to be able to forgive that unconditionally just frees you completely. And when that freedom happens, and as we talked about, that toxic thing that you're carrying when it's gone, love comes in. Yeah, it doesn't mean the action that they did against you is okay, but no, yeah, you're, you're, holding, you're holding on to that emotion that's keeping you from moving forward. Did you ever see that movie, The Shack? It's kind of the same principle where a guy has to forgive the man who murdered his daughter. Didn't see it. Yeah, it's I not that old of a movie, but kind of know. the same principle. Yeah, he needs to forgive the, the murderer of yeah. his daughter and... Once he did that, then he was able to move forward, move on with his life, you know? Yeah, that's huge. That's, that's huge to do that, but I see it. And, it, and again, it, it's not about that person. 
Right. It's, yeah. You. It's yeah. freeing you, not freeing them. And it's and, and, and I'm not suggesting you're going to call them up and say, "Hey, I forgive you." That's not the idea here. Right. 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 The idea is, I'm going to let that go. I'm going to forgive that person so that I can move forward in my life. Yeah. Yeah. Is that preventing me from doing that? So that's a very empowering thing to do. Oh yeah. But we need to get the ego out of the way so we can do that because the ego will hold on to that. Mm-hmm. for all that it's worth right? yeah, yeah, yeah. the second pillar is and we've talked a little bit about this is dispelling fear and negativity Just taking it away fear serves no purpose no. It's, it's, it's coming at us all the time we have to be very disciplined in what we accept so take fear out of your life and the negativity. I don't know if you've experienced this, but I, I, I like to say hi to people. I like to smile. Uh, I live in a very small town, so uh, you know we, we all kind of know each other. You walk in the street. Uh-huh. I go to the big cities, and everybody's kind of, you know. Yeah, I had that. Yeah. And I'll, I'll try and make eye contact intentionally and try and you know share some happiness with that person. Uh-huh. And in a grocery store, I'll say, how are you today? And almost nine times out of ten, not bad. That's a double negative. How did we get to be double negative, not bad? Yeah, right. Negative, bad is negative. Why wouldn't you say, I'm good, I'm great, beautiful day, sun shining, or there's a blizzard outside? Who cares? Right. Who cares? It, but that it, it's, it's a part of our society, it seems. I'm not bad. Yeah, just okay, okay just okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I know it's subtle, but if you, if you answer me not bad, where's the space that you're coming from? Is it a good place or is it a not so good place? And can I make it better? Subtle, but it's an observation. Right, right. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. So fear and negativity. The third one is decisiveness. If we don't decide how our lives are going to unfold, someone will decide for us. So we need to be decisive. Take all the information that we have and make a decision. In the book, I have a graph to allow people to kind of work on this as kind of an exercise, and I show some of the major decisions that I've made that Marilyn and I have made in our lives, uh, some when I was very young that were made for me that didn't pan out so well. Uh, and some that I made later on, like leaving a six figure income to go to zero income and start my life all over at age 50 because I'd gone as far away from me as I could go. I couldn't go any further away from my center. So those are some of the things, some of the decisions that we have to make in life and it's amazing when you make decisions, even the unsettling ones, the ones that kind of scare you a little bit. It's amazing what comes in to backfill and support you once you've made that decision. Right. Thoughts are a very important part of our lives, as you know and you've talked about. Um, but we do have the ability, I mean, 60 to 80,000 thoughts a day and most of them repetitive. Where is that going to get us? <laughs> far yeah but we have to decide what are we going to think about because our experience has been what we think becomes reality yep, yep. manifesting is a reality um and we we've done it all through our lives we've, we've manifested not always on the path or the time frame that we thought it was going to happen in because you're not always ready you think you're ready but right, right. Uh, maybe you're not. And so there's a little bit of a lag or as Marilyn says, well, it might not be that path. Maybe you're going to go over here. That's fine. So thoughts are really important. So decision, decide what you intend because your decisions become your intentions and your intentions become your reality. Powerful, very powerful. And that's why I said at the outset, we are so much more than we realize. We're so much more than the world would have us believe. The fourth is you, and you touched on it earlier, intuition. It's a gift. 
Silence is a gift. Forgiveness. Intuition is a gift. We don't have to think about intuition. When we think about it, now we're bringing the ego in, and it's messing up the whole process of the energy flow, right? All right. All right. So when we just trust our gut, that's the right answer. That's it. Don't think about it. But people don't trust their gut. They don't trust their intuition. They start right. thinking about it again. So again, that's part of the discipline. It's, it's part of the decision process. It's, it's part of letting go of the ego. So after empowerment, now it starts to get a little bit easy. We've kind of pinnacled at the E, and now we can move to the N, nurture. Nurture yourself, mind, body, and spirit. We really don't have to talk a lot about the body because, I mean, we've been writing about that for years. We know what we need to do. We need to hydrate. We need to eat the proper foods. We, we know those yeah. things. You talk about that. That's, that's your passion. That's your expertise. So food, I mean, what you put in is, is critical. Yeah. Vital to our, 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 our nurturing process. Yeah, well, we kind of touched on that before, too, when we talked about just how food is as a present. And yes. it, food can be a stimulant, and you could be using that emotional eating. That's what it is. So yes. maybe you don't have to feel something. So you're eating this food to suppress something. And, yeah, there's a strong connection to, to food and how that affects our emotion and our moods. And the foods today are designed to stimulate certain hormones and yep. endorphins. So you go back to eating more, maybe the unhealthy foods and stuff, but yeah, food's a huge one for people to get over and eating certain foods will lower your frequency, your vibration. So you're not able to think clearly and exactly. have a higher consciousness. Yeah. So it's, it's very deep rooted with the food thing for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. So food, hydration, taking care of our physical self, our physical. Yeah, it's huge. Um, so body, mind, what are we doing? What are we feeding? And we've talked about this, you know, what are we allowing into the brain here? Right. The, the, the intellect. And, and we know it's been proven that by certain exercises, things that we do, we can actually rewire our brains. We can, we can increase our capacity. So, we should be always looking at how can I nurture my brain, okay? And then the third thing is spirit. Spirit, we kind of we bring out for funerals and weddings, and then we pack it away, and, you know, or there's a tragedy or something happens, and, you know, we, we kind of get spiritual about things. But spirit is, is, is part of the balance. It's the harmony. It's the, it's the whole wheel. We need all three of those constantly. And... Uh, you know, on the website, I think you went, you saw, we, we talk about earthing, uh, yeah, yeah. forest bathing, uh, you know, it's it, Japanese have a word for it. It, it. It's all those things that are around us. I, I'm lucky to live on a huge body of water here and be able to walk the beach and, you know, and, and enjoy nature. And just, just hearing birds sing or, or just walking in a, in a nice gentle snowstorm or something, whatever that is. It connects us to the energy of the earth. Uh, digging your feet into the sand. Uh, lying on the grass. When we were kids, we used to lie on the grass, look up in the summer, and watch those clouds go over, right? Yeah. We, we don't do enough of that anymore. So those things are all part of the nurturing process that restores our, our natural vibrations, our natural energy flows. It feeds our, our chakras. And it, it's just who we are. It's who we are, and it helps us in our silence, our silent approach to living. So nurture, then create from your desires. See, because we've done a lot of work now on that silence chart, and now we're to the point where we feel good about ourselves, we're empowered, we're nurtured, we're inspired, we're listening to the truth of our soul, and I'm going to create. I'm going to be in a, in, a, in a flow state of creative process, whatever that is, because my gifts and talents are uniquely mine, yours are uniquely yours, 
and you're just going to let that flow because that's why we're here. Right. That's why we're here. So create from your desires. And then at, at the, the last letter is to envision. Envision the magnificent life that you've, you've been given. Maybe your life right now has not been that magnificent. Maybe you've been in tremendous growth mode. Uh, maybe you've had uh, some very difficult things that you've had to go through. Um, we're all in different phases uh, of living and, and expanding all the time. But it comes back to the manifestation. If you envision health, if you envision abundance, if you envision prosperity, uh, envision purpose, envision realizing your potential, all of those things start to show up. Yeah. Envision that the people you need to know are going to come into your life. It's been amazing for us. When we, and we never chased the money. We always just thought about what would be the best thing to do in this situation. The right, right, the right person, the right opportunity. And when you live from a place of envisioning, things just show up. Right, right. And it's beautiful. And I'm sure you've experienced in your life the same thing. I've, I've had a little bit of law of attraction experience. So I, I kind of see what that is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. When you put the positive energy out there, yeah, it's going to attract as a magnet. And yeah, and if you just, you know, I've said this before, if you get too preachy about your message or you know getting people's faces too much about it that could push them away so just be more of the example and people will see that and they'll resonate with that and they're like because your aura your light will start to shine and people are like what is this person doing i want to know what's going on and yeah, that's right they'll attract you for sure that's right you and i talked a little bit earlier about the power of of heart energy you know uh, the heart is so powerful we, we don't really realize it because we're not schooled in this, but our heart energy is so much more powerful than our brain. So when you open your heart to someone, they really don't understand what's happening. Yeah. yeah. But they feel it. They know, they know it's kind of strange, but when you get in a room with people and you start to open your heart and share that with them, they start to envision the potential that you're seeing. Right. Gratitude is so, so powerful. You know, just saying thank you. We talked a little bit earlier about that. So when, when you get to envisioning and thanking and being grateful for what's shown up, and then it just, it just once it gets rolling, it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. And it still amazes me. I'm 68 okay. years old, and it still amazes me. It's like, <laughs> can you yeah. imagine that guy actually called... Where did that come from? That book, I, I, I hadn't heard of that book, or I saw that book 30 years ago. Somebody gave me that book. This happened to me. Um, 10 years ago, somebody gave me a book. And two years ago, another dear friend gave me the same book. They were both born within the two days of each other, and they gave me the same book. I mean, it's just incredible. <laughs> yeah. Incredible, you know? And it was a powerful book, and it, and it had meaning. And these two people, I mean, one, one lives in the United States in Arizona, the other person lives up here, so in Canada. So, I mean, they don't even know each other. So <laughs> it's those kinds of examples, you know, it's just amazing. Uh, yeah, yeah, the synchronicity or serendipity, yeah. whatever they call it. Yeah, it's like, yeah, so you can pray all you want and you might not get the message the way you want to get the message or receive yeah. it. Yeah. So you have to be open to that, to receiving it to however it's gonna come because it doesn't always show up in life the way you want it to or when you want it to. So. Yeah, you have to be open to that. Exactly. So, in a real brief process here, you know, th those are the seven letters. That's that's the roadmap of self discovery that that kind of unfolded for me. That the book became, and the book is designed to really be a daily, almost uh, affirmation. Uh, people I've, uh, I've spoken to, you know, after the speaks and after they've had the book, you know, I just leave it on the coffee table. I walk through and I open the book and boom, that's what I need to see today. Because the book is structured, uh, there's not a lot of writing in it. It's, it's um, the pages are very airy. There's a lot of blank pages to make notes and so on. Oh, nice. So it's, it's kind of a working 
yeah, yeah. document, if you will. You know, it's it's not something you read and put on the shelf. It's it's something you can use every day. I do that myself. I wrote the book. <laughs> the table, and I'll walk through it. Ah, uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I, I do need to consider that today. Yeah, yeah. So it's amazing what we're given when we surrender and just let it be, just let it happen. Yeah. Well, it's funny because you touched on it in the very beginning about how you got to a point where I guess you're making six figures. I mean, you know, financially you're, you're successful, but I think a lot of people experience that, but yet they're still empty inside. Yeah. You think the people would have the perfect life, the mansion, the cars and all that stuff, but it's, it doesn't fill that hole, that void. So yeah. I, I think Jim Carrey said it and there's a meme floating around where, you know, he wishes everybody could be a millionaire once to see that it doesn't yeah. bring the happiness that you think it does. So yeah, it's all these external things and we're always seeking the next thing, the next thing to bring us that happiness and it doesn't fill that void. It's the internal work. Like you're saying, you got to do the internal work to, to find that peace, that joy that you're looking for. But that's hard. It's hard to do. It is. Um, because from a very young age, we're conditioned. Right. And we're, we're downloading, you know, up till age seven or eight, you know, or, you know, depending on who you talk to, the ex experts, but we're constantly downloading from a very young age how it's supposed to be. And there's a lot of, let's just say, other interests that flow into that other than our own interests. And yeah. It isn't until we get to uh, an age where we can actually be apart from that and stand on our own and say, this makes sense to me or it doesn't make sense to me. And I need to, I need to discover more about who I am and why I, why I need to be doing what I feel I, because we all have that feeling inside. Right. The people I've spoken to and have met, they know there's something more. And as you say, it's, it's not the big house and the money in the bank. It, that, that just, those material things just can't get it done. So when we get still, when we listen to our truth, then we can start to make other decisions and empower ourselves. Right. Yeah. So how, so you don't use the word meditation a lot, I noticed. So, but I'm assuming that's 30 seconds. I'm assuming that's, that's what this is based on is meditation and just, you know, um, self-contemplation and stuff like that. So do I you, mean, I'm not a big meditator. No, I was going to ask, do you have a meditation practice, a daily meditation practice or? No, I just, I just get silent. I just block out the noise. Um, I guess I didn't want to, it, 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 people get uncomfortable when you talk about meditating sometimes. They think it's woo, woo you know, because we're not taught how to do it. And there's so many different approaches to it. You need a mantra, you don't need a mantra. You need music, you don't need music. You need crystal bowls, you don't, on and on it goes. But silence, we all have. You can't refute that silence is a powerful gift. Meditation may not be your way of getting to your true self. But silence certainly is something that we can all decide today, I'm going to be silent for 30 seconds, a minute, whatever time you can unselfishly allow yourself to do that. And that's the silence project. It's a very personal thing. That's where it's different. It's, it's not religion it's not meditation it's not eastern or western it's the vastness of silence when we decide that we're going to make it a part of our lives and when silence becomes a part of your living you shift you can't help but shift because the things that mattered yesterday don't carry the weight today because as our consciousness expands and our awareness heightens, we hear different messages. Right. It's a gift. It's a beautiful gift. So the silence is self-explanatory. Project implies work. <laughs> so the silence project yeah. is some work 
but it's worth it. Yeah. That's the difference between saying you should do yoga, you should do this, you should, you should do all of those things if they resonate with you. But silence is deep, vast, borderless, always there, always there. Right. Always. Yeah. So yes, I'm blessed to be where I live, but I do go to the big city and I have to consciously think about when I'm sitting, you know, on the 20 lane traffic that's stuck at five o'clock out by the airport, am I going to succumb to the insanity or am I just going <laughs> right. yeah. to, am I going to be still and silent and make the most of this moment? Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's a well, decision. So, yeah. We could easily say, I mean, just the, the, the world that we've constructed with technology and just the fast paceness of it creates a lot of anxiety for people because, you know, going back to nature and earthing and, you know, walking in the woods, that's more natural for us. And this concrete jungle that we've created is yeah. completely out of nature for us. And so that causes a lot of stress and anxiety. And, you know, that's, that's hard to, to get away from that. And, you know, I'm guilty of, you know, stimulating myself with this phone every five seconds yeah. just yeah. so I get that rush or whatever it's providing for me. Yeah. And so it's, there goes my dog again. So it's hard to get out of that, that mindset. So what are, what's some good practical tips that somebody can do to maybe start that process? Is, Cause it's a constant stimulation, like I'm saying. So what's a good way, a good practice that somebody could do? Is it just sitting just for 30 seconds? Like you said, to just, zone out, turn everything off and just be still. It's taking, it's taking back your life for you. And I don't mean that in a selfish way. I don't mean to shun your children, to shun your spouse. Right, 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 right. right. Your responsibility. But I know that I could be on my phone or on my computer all the time if I chose to do, but I choose about an hour out of a, out of a 24 hour day that is dedicated to me expanding who I am. Some the work, doing the work, yeah. Doing the work, doing the project part of the silence project. And the beauty of it is I don't have to have anything to, to make this happen. I just have to be silent. Now, as I said earlier, whether it's walking the beach, or just going for a walk, or whatever, whatever resonates with you. Some people like to go sit in a chair. And some people like to go lie down uh, and, and just rest. It, it really is up to you. It's whatever will calm you so that you can, because the thoughts are going to come. You know, you, you, you don't just flick a switch. The yeah, brain oh, yeah, stop those, yeah. oh, it never stops. So, and, and the first few times you do it, it's going to be, it's going to be painful because we're not taught to do this. But when you sit in the presence of someone who is consciously with you right now, listening to every word you say, active listening, you will feel the difference because that person is actively engaged with you. What I'm suggesting is you need to actively engage with you personally, one-on-one. -on -one. Right. Lie down and put your hand on your heart. And just listen. And when you do that, you will start to feel your emotions start to move. You will breathe differently. Breathing is a huge part of this. Breath work, yeah. That's yeah. why in the book I say, don't focus on meditating, focus on breathing. Just breathe. Just breathe. Just let your natural physical body do its job. The brain is telling you, Breathe, so breathe. Embrace the silence, the vastness of what that is. 
and you will start to feel yourself shift. Yeah. Do it for 30 seconds or a minute. Then go back to your schedule. If you're eating lunch at a desk like I did many, many years ago, uh, or when I was on the road, you're eating, woofing it down as you drive, pull over. Instead of woofing it down where you drive, pull over. Go into a parking lot, finish your lunch, turn off the radio, turn off the phone, and just sit there. It's all about you discovering and becoming all you instead of somebody influenced by external forces and noises telling you who you should be. Yeah. So I know it, that I know it sounds, it sounds easy, no, yeah. but it's hard because it's, it's changing the way we live because we're so ingrained in that pace. Yeah. That pace, that pace, that pace. Yeah. Yeah. I find, I, I find it real hard. I'm getting to the point where it gets hard for me to watch television just because all the consumerism, the constant, Oh, you gotta, you know, eat this food or buy this car, or get this phone constant bombardment of telling us what to do. Mm-hmm. And you're like, ah, so I need all these things to, to feel happy and to be successful. And yeah, I'm yeah. getting to the point where I'm almost done with tele- television. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's too much. It's too much. Yeah. We don't, we don't have TV. Yeah, a good documentary or something. I'm cool with that. Oh, yeah, yeah, something that's you know stimulating, you know, nurturing, whatever, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But the but the drone of the networks is uh, yeah. We unplugged from that a few years ago, and you know what? <laughs> we didn't miss anything. We've not yeah. missed anything. Yeah. Sell them in the radio. You know, uh, we live in the country, so you know, if if we're going to go to a movie, it, it's a hundred and sixty kilometer drive. You know, we're gone for two hours just driving time. And my wife and I, a lot of times, we don't even turn the radio on. Uh, we just go by, and we're looking at the country, we're, 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 just, we're just still, yeah. we're quiet. We're just at peace, you know? Yeah. And, and it, it's a decision, it's a decision. But once you, once you get a glimpse of the peace within silence, yeah. and you start to, feel your true self and you start to feel that you really have a purpose for being here and that I really, I really enjoy that, that I'm good at that. I should, I'm going to pursue that. Um, I'm going to let that go. You know, I could drink more water. I could, you know, all those things that we know, I am going to sit down and I am going to journal. Journaling helped me immensely. I was going to ask you if you did that. Uh, my time. Yeah. And, and I talk about that in the book. Don't worry about what's on the paper. It's allowing an emotional flow to express on paper, or you can do it in a computer if you like, but for me, it was pen to paper. And I, I you know, those uh, three ring whole binders, you know, those coil ring binders about that. I, mm. I feel bunches of those things just yeah, right yeah. and it works it works so you know that's that's another tip i would say you know breathing journaling uh making time for that silent project that you're working on that project that you're working on that's you you are the project right yeah. um the good news is doesn't take a lot of cost assets it's all about deciding what's important yeah. and, then, and then enjoying enjoying the ride of who you truly are yeah have you ever tried a hipassana retreat a silent meditation retreat no, no. i i did go to uh it was a weekend retreat um the ashais i i, I think they're global uh they work on on ascension so it's just very quiet. There's no talking for hours. Okay. And I quite enjoyed that. And I think that was part of my process of shifting away from the corporate grind to, you know, it, I don't even know. It, it showed up in an email one day. Okay. Yeah. 
come to an Ascension retreat. Uh, it wasn't far, it was only about an hour away from me. It was a beautiful place in the country, and I had no idea what I was getting into. And uh, I went, and that was, it was wonderful. It was part of the process. So, you know, all those things, are, our, our youngest daughter, she holds retreats uh, in the summertime. Actually, I did a speak there uh, last year, and my wife, Marilyn, she went, and, and she's a Reiki practitioner, so she did Reiki for uh, oh, nice. one of the attendees who were there. And uh, it's just, it's making yourself available when these things show up. And instead of saying, oh, I probably can't, I can't make the time. I can't afford it. I shouldn't do that. But you'll find a hundred reasons not to go. You should just say, you know what? I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Because it didn't show up for no reason. It's not a mistake. It's an opportunity for you to make that. Remember those four pillars in empowerment decision, make a decision to go and do that for yourself. Yeah. You know, the book that falls off the shelf, you should pick that book up. You probably should buy that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that happened for a reason, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and some people say, oh, that's just foolishness. Okay, that's where you're at. You know, yeah. that's okay. That's fine. Yeah. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have any opinion about it. I don't. I don't. Because what's important is what you think. What's important is what you hear from inside, right? Judgments, they're everywhere. You don't need to. I don't have an opinion. What matters is that you listen to your heart. Because the answers are within. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we've got to get close to start wrapping this up. So uh, I love everything that you've said so far. Um, I think all this is great information. So what's, what's the overall goal for you, uh, for, for humanity and consciousness? Um, I, I know you're spreading the good word and, and doing, doing that, but where do you see this going? What's, what's your ultimate goal for, for us as humanity? What, what would you like to see? I would like people to realize that they are everything that they wish for, everything they think about, they are so much more than they've been led to believe. Right. That if you allow yourself the time to be silent, you will connect with something that is much more powerful than anything that you've experienced in the realms of machinery or technology, science, religion. It's not about any of those man-made creative things. They all serve us. Uh, they all have a reason for being here and a purpose. We have to decide what service. But there is some, there's something much more available to us as humanity. And as we shift and as our consciousness levels increase, as our awareness uh, it rises. We are going to see there is there is much more for us to be doing to make this a better place to live, and there's tremendous power in just being. You don't have to be doing every minute, second of the day. It's okay to just sit and be, whether that's at lunch, morning, afternoon. Whatever you decide works for you. And if we all do that, we are going to see a change because right. it, will, it will shift what we think is important. Right. And we need, I think you, you touched on it at the outset, um, we need something to bring the light into some of the shadows that we're experiencing. And there's nothing wrong with the shadows. Those are the contrasts that we learn from, that we go through. Um, as, you know, as people have said, you know, it's very easy when you're walking on top of the mountain and the sun shining. It's when you're down in the valley and the, the, the mist and the clouds and the rain are all around you and you can't see clearly. That's, that's when it's challenging. Right. But that's when you're going inside and you're finding 
what is it that I need to change? What is it that I need to do differently? Right. Well, you because can't it, should be, it should be an effortless flow. Right. We yeah. Everything we need. We're just, we're just maybe not looking at it in the way that we could. Right. For the betterment. Well, you can't have the light without the dark, right? I mean, uh, the that's, that's the duality of life. It, it's always going to be there. So, yeah. And, and I'm well, not... We, I, we have that light inside us. Right. We got to let, let it shine. We got to bring it out. Right. And I don't want to come across as anti-technology. I think there's some great things about technology and sure. just with the platforms and like what we're doing here, podcasting, we're able to spread that message out even further. So there are good yeah. things to technology. I'm not oh, yes. all Absolutely. bad about that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you on that. But we get to choose how it enhances our lives or stymies our lives. We yeah. always have to choose, right? Yeah, you pick and choose what information you want to come into your life. And, and then the way we process and think about that, that's going to manifest back out into the world. So yeah. that's right. That's right. Absolutely. Um, if people want to connect with you or follow your work, what's the best way, Doug? Well, I, I guess uh, when it comes to technology, I'm not on all the platforms. Uh, I'm on the Facebook uh, page. I find that's a place that's a little more silent than uh, some of the other platforms that are out there. <laughs> silent means still, it means calm. Uh, so I'm only on Facebook. Uh, we do have a website, thesilenceproject.ca. Um, and there, there's blogs and there's podcasts and uh, some of those exercises we talked about to consider. And just really an introduction to you, because it's all about the person who is, is thinking about the silence project for the first time. Silence is a, is a gift. It is the constant that we have in our lives if we choose it. So project is the work, silence is already there. It's the platform for us to, to springboard from, right? The yeah. silence project. Um, in the shop, you'll see there, there is a limited edition book which uh, we, can, we can ship if people are interested in that. We also have uh, the book recorded in my voice, uh, an audio book, The Entire Silence Project. Um, that's about two hours and 40 minutes long, I think. Uh, we do caution people not to listen to that while they're driving, though, because uh, it, it, it is a very calming piece of work. As a matter of fact, I've worked with some first responders uh, with PTSD, they prefer the audio book to the written word because of their concentration. Oh, yeah. They struggle a little bit with concentration. Uh, and we have it in two formats for ebooks. So um, they, can, they can access those from the, uh, from the website. And of course, they're in Canadian dollars. So with the US dollar being as powerful as it, as it is, you can uh, roughly just uh, the book would be uh, 29. Uh, the audio book 12 and the e-book is so that's, uh, in where they are in their lives and whether they want to tap into that or not. But that's all on the website there. Oh, you broke up. Well. You broke up at the end there. What was the e-book? How much was the e-book? The e-book is $9. $9 okay. And what I'm quoting you is U.S. dollars. On Obviously, okay. on the website, it's in Canadian dollars. So but it's about a 30% uh, differential. And of course, uh, any US uh, purchases have no tax on them, so okay. as well. And you said in the beginning you do lectures and retreats and stuff. Any plans to come down to the States anytime soon or? Uh, I, I don't have any plans to come to the US. There's no, there's no tour yeah. sentence? No, sentence. I don't have a tour set. Uh, okay. We're just, you know, we're, we're a year into this and uh, the oh, okay. feedback is tremendous. Uh, I was invited to speak at a CEO retreat. Interestingly, the retreat was self-analysis of your ego. Uh, <laughs> these were, yeah, it was a very interesting. And I start off my speak with the three ego boxes, you know, and they were quite, uh, quite a bit, actually, uh, to get them thinking. Uh, as I said, I've done retreats and uh, had some very uh, positive feedback from a psychotherapist um, about the book and how it's helping her patients. She's actually recommending the book to her patients. So it's, uh, it's early days, but the, the difference is there. The, the feedback has been very positive. So 
Nice, nice. Very, very excited. Now, are you a proponent of uh, doing the psychedelics to help crack that ego open or no? Ayahuasca ceremonies, anything of that nature? Or no? um, I, mean, I don't think they're needed, but. I'm aware of ayahuasca. I've seen positive results from ayahuasca. Yeah. With people who felt that it really, it did open them. It did make a difference. I mean, it's been around for forever. Right, right. Um, but so has silence. So it really depends on what you think you need, you know? And everybody has had their own journey, their own challenges their own traumas their own things they've had to overcome and in some cases uh some people are very strong on that so i think it comes back to the individual yeah well, if it resonates with you or not yeah yeah exactly exactly all right doug well i'm gonna let you get out of here this was fun uh, i appreciate you coming on and i think you said this was your first podcast interview yeah. so i'm glad to be the first one so yes thank you very much i appreciate the opportunity yeah, yeah, cool. So, uh, all right, well, have an awesome day and I'll be in touch, man. And I wish you every success with all the important work you're doing, too. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Thank you, Chris. All right, take care, Doug. All the best. Bye bye. Bye bye.